Friday, I'm Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. I'm here every Monday, 4.30pm, to talk about the boxing action of the weekend just gone. And the big event over the weekend was, of course, at Alexandra Palace, the matchroom show on The Zone. A night of very, very close, some would say controversial decisions, um, certainly in the big fights. Johnny Fisher's victory uh, over Gabriel Nguema was the clearest one of the main TV action, um, but the others all caused varying degrees of contention um, about the scores. No new topic there um, for British audiences, of course. Um, but we'll start with the main event, and as the uh, thumbnail for this video makes quite clear, and the title, of course, I'm sorry <laughs> to all the people out there who I know won't be happy, but I did score it a draw. I scored it round by round. Um, I was watching it on the zone on my laptop. Um, I wasn't ringside, it has to be said. Um, but I had it, I think I gave Ryder one of the first six rounds. It might have been the fourth, but don't hold me to that. I know the official scorecard showed that the judges, um, so at least one of them gave him three of the first six rounds. That was harder to see. I thought Ryder took ages to get going. I think he was offset. His rhythm, he likes to get into a rhythm, John Ryder. He was offset by Jacobs, whose jam was excellent in the early rounds. He moved laterally very well, and, and he would he would shoe shine basically one or two shots, move away, one or two shots, grab. And there was a lot of holding. I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Um, there was a lot of holding from Jacobs's side, um, but he was kind of outboxing, old manning Ryder to a large extent for those first six rounds. It did look like he was going to cruise his way to a relatively comfortable decision. As I said, I only gave and I hadn't had any even rounds by that point, so I only gave Ryder the think it was the fourth so by halfway I had Jacobs in a 5-1 lead and it looked very unlikely that Ryder would work his way back into it then round seven happened Ryder seemed to hurt Jacobs I think it was with a, a left um, down the pipe and after that he was on him um, like a harbour shark just you know really pushed it pushed the action threw punches in bunches cut the ring off quicker with his footwork all the things he should have been doing from the start and I'm sure when Ryder looks back at this, Mike Costello, the commentator, said at the end it was his best performance of his career. wasn't even close. wasn't even in the top three. Um, he was much better against Callum Smith, where many people felt he was hard done by, in that case, by the decision. Um, he didn't really get going until round seven, which was a shame, because a lot of the things he was doing, part of it was due to how well Jacobs boxed early, but part of it Ryder could have done. He could have mixed things up a bit more, shown more variety early on, could have cut the ring down a bit better, and could have moved his head a bit better on the way in. But the most thing, the biggest fault with Ryder in the early rounds was that he was too reticent because he was worried about getting tagged on the way in. It meant that he was getting beaten to the punch too often. And that's something he'll want to correct as he goes forward. Um, but Jacobs did prove a very awkward and elusive target, certainly early on. So I thought Ryder stemmed the tide, got himself a bit of momentum. For most people, seemed to win 7, 8, 9. I think it was round 10, but don't hold me to it. Um, where Jacobs came back into things a bit. I think that might be one of the two that I had um, even. And then I had Ryder winning, I think it was, would it be four? No, it, I had Ryder winning five, yeah, so I had Ryder winning that one round out of the first six, and then five of the last six. Is that right? No, that's wrong, four of the last six. Yeah, so five rounds each and two even. So I had two of the final six rounds even. I know a lot of people out there don't like um, even scorecards, but I think when it's so close that you're not sure who the winner is, it's better to score it even than to just make a pick and say, oh, well, he was better. If you can't pick straight away, you shouldn't force yourself to pick a winner, in my view. But a lot of people had it 7-5 to Jacobs, I saw, and if I had put my two even rounds to Jacobs instead of splitting them down the middle, then I would have had 7-5 to Jacobs as well. So my scorecard isn't all that different very, very close, in fact, to the majority of people out there who had Jacobs taking a close win. And I would have had no problem with Jacobs taking a close win. Equally, you know, if the two even rounds had gone to Ryder, then he would have won 7-5 on my card. That might have been hard to see, because for most people, Jacobs um, had the edge. But still, a close victory by either man is not a robbery in a close fight. And I've said this so many times now, I'm boring myself, and I hope I'm not boring too many of you. But the chance of robbery and injustice is all too frequent. If someone absolutely dominates a fight and then the decision goes against them, that's a robbery. But if someone um, is, participates in a close fight, and I don't think there's many people out there, we'll see in the comments, I guess, but I don't think there's many out there who will say it's not close. 
that fight on Saturday night at Alexandra Palace, then you can't really complain, or you shouldn't really complain, if the decision goes to either man as long as it's close. No one had Ryder, none of the judges had Ryder winning by four points or anything like that. It was close on all three cards, it was a split decision, and he just about pulled it out. And I have no problem with that. And not because, as a lot of people have said, well, Ryder's been on the bad end of a lot of close decisions in the past, so he kind of will let this one slide. I don't see it like that. You know, the old two wrongs don't make a right. I don't think he should get the benefit of the doubt because it's gone against him before. I just think you score the fight as you see it. And if you believe it's close, you can't realistically, justifiably, complain if it's a close win for either man or a draw, which is how I had it. A draw, 114-114. But yeah, I understand uh, why people weren't happy. On the subject of the holding, though, and, and this doesn't kind of counteract the score, I don't understand why referee Steve Gray never really even warned Jacob seriously about the infraction, let alone take a point. He was holding excessively. He was holding tactically early on, and then it became excessive when he was under pressure in the second half of the fight. Really isn't what we want to see. I don't have a massive problem with tactical holding. Bernard Hopkins, of course, was a master of it, but... There is a point when it becomes excessive and it outweighs the effective punching by the fighter, the guilty party, if you like. So I would have liked to have seen a point come off and then maybe there would have been slightly less um, controversy about the decision. The other two fighters on the show, Felix Cash got off the deck a couple of times to beat Magomed Mediev, who put forward a really good performance. Cash looked amazing, actually, in parts. Looked genuinely world-class at times when he was you know, in the ascendancy. But yeah, a bit, bit reckless, got dropped a couple of times, heavily at least one of those occasions, and there's a few things for him to work on. And it does make it look a bit bad now that everyone was talking up his chances against the likes of Eubank Jr. and Liam Williams, and then that happens. But I don't think it makes a difference. I still think that Felix Cash would be a real threat to those guys. I don't think just because he got knocked down twice by a decent fighter, that means he's suddenly not good anymore. I think... Um, Boxing, especially on social media, boxing audience, including myself at times, can be too reactionary. So I still think he's a very good fighter. And no doubt he won the fight for me. Um, Ellie Scottney stepped up um, against Georgelina Guanini. Um, that was her first 10-rounder. It was for an international belt. Guanini, former world champion, down at Super Flyweight. This one was at Super Bantam. We saw her come over before, fell to make the weight against Rachel Ball. Very short notice. And Ball had by far the better of that fight. But obviously, Ball, given what she went on to achieve, can't really compare, be compared too much with Scottney at this stage of her career. It was only her fourth pro fight, I think, maybe fifth. I shouldn't get this wrong, I know her really well. But either way, it was a tough, gruelling war. Scottney was cut above the eye quite early on. It looked a bad one as well, a bit of a gusher. Um... When she was able to box, when she was able to get space to box, she was easily the better technical boxer, light on her feet, light, lovely left hook, which she seemed to hurt um, Guanini with early on, but was just too often drawn into that inside trading and wrestling and grappling. That's not really her game. It definitely favoured Guanini, who looked like a bigger woman in there. That's not fat shaming. She was in good shape, but she just looked bigger for the weight. Scotty obviously has ambitions to go down to Bantam, so that's understandable. And it just seemed like in the middle rounds, um, Scottie ran out of a bit of gas, ran out of ideas to an extent, and then came back well towards the end of the fight. So there was a bit of a lull in the middle rounds, and Guanini took advantage of that, punching in flurries, bullying, bullying um, Scottie at times. Whereas when Scottie was fighting well, she was able to gain distance with her better footwork and land a more effective shot. Now I had it, I think I had Scottie winning by a point. It was two points, but in the last round, with only about 50 seconds left in the whole fight, referee Steve Gray, the guy who refused or chose not to admonish uh, Danny Jacobs for his holding, decided to take a point off Scottney for holding. Now, I'm not sure there was much point, given he hadn't given a previous warning and there was only 50 seconds left in the fight, but uh, taking a, I'm not sure taking a point was the right course of action, given that no, nothing had happened before. But what I would say is there was excessive holding from Scotney around that point in the fight. So, you know, a firm warning probably would have sufficed. And then if she'd continue, take the point off. But you are supposed to give a warning first. And maybe I missed it watching on TV, but I know she didn't see it either. Um, so, yeah, I had her two points ahead and that winning the last round. And then that point taken off made it only a one point victory. But I still thought, you know, again, a close fight, either way, no problem. But then, yeah, again, cries of robbery across social media, as you often see. 
yes, they're the house fight has got the benefit. And I understand people saying, well, there's a pattern. You know, yes, they might all be close fights, but surely by law of averages, if everything's fair and above board, the away fighter should win them sometimes. And I get that. And I think there is work to do on the officiating in the UK in general. But I just think based on last night and scoring them as I watched them, I think the house fighters deserve the victory in, in two of the main three fights. And I think John Ryder was, you know, fair enough to get a draw on my card, which means I'm not going to moan that he got a close win. Now they all move on, of course, and I'll wait for your comments, of course, I'm sure people will... I mean, just tell me if you think any of those three fights weren't close, if they were genuine robberies, if you were shocked when you heard the decision. And not shocked because... Uh, if, you sh if you weren't shocked because you expected them to be robbed, that's a bit different. But what I'm saying is, were you? did you think the scorecards were justifiable or not? Let me know. Um, going forward, I think Scotty gets back in the gym, works hard, and, you know, maybe a... A similar level test before she goes for a world title fight. Um, so similar level as Guanini, a kind of veteran former world champion who can teach her a few tricks. Um, maybe closer to the bantamweight limit would be a good idea as well. Felix Cash, I think, needs to fight for that European title next. I don't think the European title fight would be particularly harder in terms of quality than Mediev. Um, and I think Cash can kind of refine. He's been out of the ring for a while. I think you know he can work on those rough elements that kind of going in a bit too gung-ho, I think that can easily be smoothed out in the gym. Um, and he is physically quite a, a strong guy, he's robust, he got up well from the knockdowns, he recovered well. So there's still plenty of there's plenty of upside to Felix Cash. Um, and then from the main event, John Ryder, there's obviously talk of bringing Canelo over to the UK because Ryder's in pole position, you expect him to get a very high ranking with the WBA now, that was a WBA eliminator. Not so sure Canelo fancies coming over here for John Ryder. I think that might be a bit fanciful, um, to be kind. But there could be more big fights in Ryder's future if Canelo gives up the belts, could fight for a vacant title, and um, we get someone else who's high in the WBA rankings. They could obviously do a rematch, and maybe Ryder could look to improve his performance. But the world's kind of his oyster now. And for Jacobs, because a lot of people feel he should have won the fight, he's not harmed overly by this. It was a better performance from him than against Gabe Rosado in his previous fight. He can go back to the US, he can blame home cooking um, for the judge, uh, the judgment against him and still get some big name fights. You know, there's still plenty of room for improvement, certainly in the second half of his display. So I don't think it's the end of the world for Jacobs. He might pursue a rematch, but he probably want it in the US and maybe Ryder would be open to that as well. I don't think, you know, anyone really loses there, which ironically would have been the same with a draw. I had it on my card. I um, don't know if I've mentioned that. But yeah, really, really enjoyed it more than, you know, worrying about the decisions and everything else, which are important, but I really enjoyed the action. I thought Ryder Jacobs ignited in the second half. It was pretty tedious stuff for the first six rounds. Um, I thought Felix Cash against Medev was a really good fight. I thought Scott Iguanini was a really good fight as well. Um, and Johnny Fisher wasn't the best fight I've ever seen, but again, more steps in his development and just a raucous atmosphere by the 2,500 people or so that were cheering him on always creates a, a fantastic atmosphere so really enjoyed the card as a whole and um yeah that's how i scored the the main fights and what i think about it let me know what you think i'm sure you won't be backwards in coming forward um, to do so i'll be back on thursday for flex expectations looking ahead of course to amir khan against kel brook i watched uh, uh, behind the gloves not behind the gloves that's another youtube channel of course Fair play to them, but that's not what I meant to say. Uh, the gloves are off last night on Sky Catch Up. Um, just thought it was incredibly entertaining. I recommend you all go and watch it. I'll do the preview on Thursday, but Khan was having the time of his life. Just like not taking it at all seriously, but it's very, very funny. So, yeah, I recommend you all go and watch that. And my preview on Thursday, 4.30pm, for expectations. And then I'll be back with the next Reflections Monday at the same time, where I'll be looking back on a victory uh, over one man against his long-time nemesis. Which man that'll be, we'll find out. Or maybe it'll be a draw. Who knows? Uh, they've already talked about a rematch. So we shall see. Maybe I'm being sceptical. See you when I come back. Really appreciate you watching. See you all soon. Cheers.